Kings and Priests is the title of my message today because I really believe that God, uh, really, he wanted uh, earth uh, to become like heaven. He, didn't, he really didn't want earth to come to heaven. Too often, I think that it's been um, spoken of and, and shared throughout the years of my walk is that um, we would find that if we lived good, if we had faith, if we believed and we, and we repented when we needed to, then we were, had this whole goal of the prize is going to heaven. And heaven, us going there, was really what it was all about. Can I tell you something? I don't really, um, I don't believe that was God's intent. I'm going to share some things with you today that um, I really believe might open up a lot of people's eyes. That God has, his intent from the very beginning was to establish kings and priests on the earth. To bring heaven down to earth. Not to look forward to going to heaven. See, I think we flipped it. Um, and a lot of times, that's what happens with religion. Um, we have to understand that, that we're not religious here, we're relational. It's all about being in relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's all about um, knowing that, that uh, God's primary design for us to be, is to be co-laborers with him. That God wants to, you know, uh, commission, commission us. And really, if you think of um, uh, commissioning, it's really, and I heard this once, but it, uh, it's, it's commission is when we're in submission to the primary mission. So commissioning is when we're in submission, we're surrendered to the primary mission. And so today, I hope that we're going to grab a hold of this and hope I'll be able to communicate what the Word of God is telling us and what He established from the very beginning in Genesis 1 and what He wanted to do um, and, and to reveal to you and me and how many times it got tripped up and, and tripped over and, um, and Jesus came to establish it back. And so I just want to encourage you that. Because uh, as we yield ourselves to his word and his spirit, then in the midst of the conversation, in the midst of the dialogue, in the midst of us spending time with the Lord, that he's going to speak to us divine things. He's going to reveal his divine plan, his strategies. He's going to reveal to us the things that he has for us. And it's not to harm us, but to give us a future and a hope. It's to bless us, right? And so if we look to this, it, it, you know, when he reveals something to us, um, it's, it's to change the natural or the material things that's going on around us. If I can say this, if we walk in obedience to him and his will and his ways, then we can be the conduit to transfer and to change the atmosphere in such a way that we can make a difference wherever we're at. And I, I don't believe that God wants us to leave where we're at to go establish those things. I believe that he wants us to know that he's come to empower us to overcome anything that the enemy's doing and to establish his kingdom here on earth. Amen? Amen? So it, it's really, we've, we've got to get out of this old narrative that always wants to put a carrot. Have you ever had anybody try to give you a carrot? Hey, you know, I've been in business. And, oh, man, if you, if, if you just do this job a little bit cheaper, man, I got some big ones coming up. Heaven is, should not be a carrot. Heaven should not be something that we're just looking forward to and just, man, if I can just grit it out, if I can just tough it out, that one day, man, I'm going to make it to heaven. Why not establish what he's wanting right here, right now, here on earth? Well, how do I do that? Well, buckle your seatbelts. We're going to go through it right now. Okay? So I, I just really feel um, that too many of us feel unqualified. And, you know, how many, how many people ever know that if you feel unqualified, maybe you're getting into a place of humility. And how many people know that God rejects the proud but gives grace, say grace, grace. to the humble? So you feeling unqualified sometimes qualifies you. Right? So think about that. I mean, sometimes it's the yes in your spirit. It's the yes saying, Lord, 
I don't know how I can do it, but with you, all things are possible. As we start to pull, I was talking to a brother earlier, and he was, he was sharing with me about how, how, how he, was, he was communicating that we just sometimes we just got to pull on the promises of God. We got to remind God of promises. We got to declare God's promises. And, and that's how we walk into our blessing. That's how we walk into our healing. Right, Darnetta? Come on. That's how we get to a place where, you know, we've seen healings today. We have to get to that place where we understand in the midst of everything that's going on around us, in the midst of everything that's taking place, that we can be those people that can be victorious in every situation, in every circumstance. And, you know, I, I was in um, Psalms 91. If you think about this, that if you abide in the presence of God, if you abide and then you, you come underneath the shadows of his wings and abide in that place, well, is the shadow full of light, or is, there, is it kind of darker than the possibilities of the light? I believe that God is saying that it doesn't matter what you're going through, it doesn't matter what you're experiencing, that you can find safety in the shadows of my wings. And it's in that shadow times that if our faith is where it should be, if our trust is where it should be, that we're in a safe place because we're close to God. I love uh, Romans 14, 17. The kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So it's righteous. Who's righteous? Anybody here is righteous? I'm righteous only because of Jesus Christ. Otherwise, I'm like filthy rags. Right? So, so our righteousness comes from what he did and who he is. And if he's in us, then we become righteous. Does that mean we never make mistakes? No. That just means when we make mistakes, we repent and we're covered by the blood. See, we're covered by the perfect blood of Jesus. And all we have to do is be, uh, surrender our life and lifestyle to him. So in other words, be quick to repent. We mess up. Just be quick to apologize. Be quick to repent. Don't fall into the trap. It's, it's time, friends, that we start looking to see what God's doing, not what he's not doing. Don't focus on what he's not doing. Focus on what he is doing. Because the enemy will always try to distract us to look at the things that he's not doing and say, uh-huh. Isn't it true? Why? Why? Because our faith has to be uh, in a place where it's not just faith and then all of a sudden I pray and because it doesn't happen like a microwave, like right away, then I just don't pray anymore and I go on to the next thing. That's not the way God wants it to be. God wants our prayers to stay until it's done. So in other words, the kingdom is not the material world. It's the unseen world that has an effect on the material world. It's the things not seen that's manifesting and revealing us on what we should do or can do or whatever to change what's happening in the natural. It's kind of like we allow God super to invade our natural and become supernatural. Hope of the world is not for the return of Christ because he, he um, because when we if we have that our hope is all in about Jesus returning and how many people have been hearing that oh it's getting close oh man hey darkness has covered the earth and there's deep darkness on some of those folks out there so it must be getting close well our focus should not be on that our focus should be on what we can do for Christ for the kingdom's sake while we're here on earth does that make sense I love what Darnetta said when she, when she got her healing. She says, man, I just want to, her prayer was that I, I just want to get healed and set free so I can do more for Jesus, right? You know, I, I want to do more. Join the club. I do too. <laughs> I, we all should. And I, I just really believe that, that we have to get past that because it's the gospel of the kingdom of God released here on earth which should be important. It's because, I don't know about y'all, but man, I want to have opportunity to win more souls. I'm looking forward to this great revival that, you know, God says he does nothing or, you know, uh, he does nothing unless, his, um, unless he reveals it to his friends, the prophets. Right? 
So they've been prophesying that there's going to be a, a great revival that's coming. And I really believe it's already popping up. It's already, we're already starting to see um, small little, but I think it's going to happen even more and more. I think about when we look to the, um, when we look to the church that we've seen, even after years of, 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 of Jesus being gone, that they were still going and, and what? Praying and holding to the teachings of the apostles. And, and, and they were still coming together and breaking bread. And they were still going from house to house. And they, they're still going for the very presence and the very heart of God wherever they were. Matter of fact, I think about when Peter was in, in, uh, in, in jail after they killed John. And Peter was in, in, pri in prison because, what, this ruler, this, this political leader, Herod, saw that there was a group of people that liked it so much that he says, oh, now I'll just do it to Peter too. But he couldn't take Peter out because it was the Sabbath, and so he had to wait until after that. But in the meantime, there was people that were continually praying, continually praying. And in the midst of continually praying, God not only heard their cries, not only heard their prayers, that he sent an angel. And you guys know the story. Went to him, the shackles came off, opened the door, let him out, get to the, get to the door, and it was like they had a remote control gate, you know, because it just opened on its own. But then after he left, what happened? The angel disappeared, and he walks to the house where they were all praying. And then I, I believe it was this, uh, that Rona had come to the door. And when she saw him, all of a sudden, she got so excited, she didn't even open the door. She didn't even open the gate. She just ran back and told everybody. And they said, oh, you must have seen a ghost. You must have. This. They're praying for it, and they didn't believe it themselves that God would do it. How often do we ever do that? We pray because we go through the motions of prayer because we know it's the right thing to do, but we're really not believing for it. We have to get to a place that we understand that it's the fervent prayer that builds the character. You know, we can pray, but if we give up um, halfway through the, uh, the manifestation of the prayer being answered, then our faith didn't go to another place. So if we're praying for something, and we know how big God is, if we give up on it in the midst of it before it actually manifests, then, then we didn't grow our faith. Our faith stayed small or smaller than it could have. But if we have faith prayers that we keep it going, we keep it fervent, we keep going for it, that faith will build our character. That kind of prayer will build our character. Why? Because when you start to see things start to manifest, the glory of God manifests, and, and the things that you pray for all of a sudden start to take place, then guess what? There's a shift in your faith, in your character, that you can believe for more. And then when you can believe for more, you can start having more. Matthew 12, 28. Okay, but if I cast out a demon by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Are you guys under getting that? So in other words, when there's a miracle that takes place, when the miraculous hits your situation, whatever you're doing, then all of a sudden the kingdom of God has come upon you. So, so I said, really, Lord? So then when I was praying for that gentleman, and he was definitely demonically, and we declared, and we w took him through, and that demon left, then his, the kingdom of God came upon him. Why? Because that, the kingdom of God, the authority of God came on and, can't, and told that demonic authority to leave. That, see, we have to understand that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. It's not just a saying. Now, the, the enemy has power, but we have authority. So we can't, we can't be these people that walk around and try to convince ourselves that he doesn't have any power because obviously he has a lot of influence over a whole lot of people. And, and, and sometimes we might even consider those powerful people because they're people in authority. 
and they make mistakes and they're influenced, demonically influenced, and they're making some decisions right now that, whoo, and they're probably really good people. But, man, they've been led and, 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 and been influenced by someone, something and someone that's not. Does that make sense? So we just keep praying for them, if that makes sense. And, and, and that's what happens, and it happens over and over and over again. We're going to be talking about it in just a minute. And I, I just want to get you ready for this and prepare you because it's so important that we understand not only the power that we have, but the authority that we have. I remember being at a, at a place and we're ministering and all of a sudden the Lord told me there's something going on with this lady. And so we started to pray and all of a sudden that spirit that was in her and on her said, I said, come off her, come out. And she goes, I'm not going anywhere. Oh, yes, you are. We don't have to, see, friends, we don't have to allow intimidation or any other thing. We have to know the spirit that's in us is greater. Uh, say greater than any other spirit. That's why we want Holy Spirit and no other spirit in our homes. We want Holy Spirit guiding us and no other spirit guiding us. So if you got a spirit of anger, repent. That's a spirit. What do you mean, Pastor? When I'm getting angry, there's a spirit. Well, well, let me ask you this. Is it peace, joy, love, gentleness, kindness? I mean, we know the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We got to get into a place where we recognize who we're being led by and sometimes led astray by. Spirit of fear. How many people have ever been scared? Well, a spirit of fear, my Bible says that perfect love casts out all fear. Right? So that means if we're finding ourselves fearful, then we got to tap into his presence. we got to seek his word, seek his nature, seek who he really is, and then start saying, no, he loves me. He cares for me. He will protect me. But now, don't get me wrong, you can't be stupid and say, hey. Do something that you know you shouldn't be doing because you say, well, his perfect love. No. He wants us to use wisdom. It's like, it's like oh, well, you know, you, you can trample on snakes and scorpions and you won't. No, don't go out there and play with some rattlesnakes thinking that he's, nothing's going to happen. That's just stupid. Right? But we got to understand that there is a God that loves us and his perfect love should cast out all fear from us. I can't remember the last time I feared. Why? If something happens, and now this might seem contradictory to you, but if something happens and, and, and I go home to be with the Lord, I graduated. I mean, what's the worst the enemy can do to me? Are you with me? I, can, I know where I'm going, but that doesn't mean I want to go there yet. I got a lot to do. Come on. Let's just, I'm just keeping it real. He established his kingdom through yielded and surrendered lives. He shapes our hearts and our minds and our thinking until we become recalibrated into what his desire is for us and the planet. Are you guys getting this? We've got to understand that we don't, got all, we don't have all the answers, but he does. And the more time we spend with him, the more we're going to find out what the divine nature of God is and the divine plan of what God is. And then when we get into his, his word, when we really get close to him, all of a sudden he starts to show us his, his game plan, which goes against what the enemy's trying to show you. And the world's trying to show you. His very, Jesus' very first public um, speaking he said, hey, man, I, I've got to go to the cities, and I've got to preach the kingdom of God. I've got to preach the kingdom of heaven. Jesus was all about it. But Jesus wasn't the only one. John Baptist preached it. Do you know that Moses preached it? Do you know that, that we, can, we can go, there's a whole list of people. Paul preached it. Um, Daniel preached it. David preached it. Isaiah preached it. And we're going we're gonna to go some, through some scriptures. Some of you are looking like, really? Are you sure? Because how come I never hear the kingdom preached? When's the last time you heard anyone preach on the kingdom of God? It's been a long time for me. i got to tell you something, friends. This was one of those things that's revelatory. It's one of those things that God wants us to know because that's what he's trying to establish here on earth. He doesn't want you to wait till you get to heaven. 
to experience it. Matthew 6, 9, and 10. Let's turn there. In this manner, it says, Therefore pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Now what is that doing? That's giving God honor that he deserves, right? That's just respect and honor, right? It says, and it goes in 10, it says, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will, I looked it up, thy will be done is talking, the will here is referring to original intent. Original intent. In other words, his purpose. His will is reflecting on what was his purpose. What's his original intent? Thy kingdom come, thy will, my original intent, my purpose, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not waiting till I get to heaven to find out about it, but no, on earth as it is in heaven. And so his kingdom come, his purpose, his original intent is done when on earth as it is in heaven. But we have to have faith to believe that God can do this. As the Holy Spirit empowers us. You know, um, Jesus said it's better that I go that the Father would send the Comforter. The one that would teach you all things in which you need to know. The paraclete, the one that comes alongside you. The one that will guide you. The one that will empower you. The one that will equip you. I think about how the Holy Spirit empowers us, but we have to submit to his leadership. Too often we want our flesh to lead the way. And God's saying, man, I'm speaking to your spirit. Allow your spirit to lead you. That was original design. Do you know that? That, that, when, that when God created the heavens and the earth in, in Genesis 1, it says that what? He made man, and, and, that, and that's, that word is Adam. When we see mankind, it's mankind. That word Adam there, Adam, is really meaning mankind. It's, it's not male or female. It's all. Okay, so as we look to this, he says that he made him in our image. In other words, the very nature of God, the, the very, yes, do, do we have soul, body, and spirit? Yes, but our spirit was always designed to dominate our flesh. Because, see, our flesh is all about the way we think, the things that we do, do and the, all the, 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 the desires that we might have that don't line up with him. But his spirit communes with our spirit. I always ask this, how many spirits do you have? A lot of people tell me one. I say, well, we'll we'll pray for you because we want you to receive Holy Spirit. Because you wouldn't be breathing if you didn't have a spirit. But it's not until you are born again that you receive Holy Spirit. Spirit Spirit-filled, blood-bought believers in the Most High God. And it's his spirit that communes with our spirit, but we have to submit to that spirit. It's laid down lovers. It's, a, it's, it's being in a place where, where we're going to allow ourselves to just submit to him and to allow him to guide us and to lead us, to empower us, to teach us. The message of the Bible is about the, a king and his kingdom. The goal, number two, I know this is going to go fast. The message of the Bible is about a king and his kingdom. The goal of God is, to, uh, is, is the extension of his kingdom on earth. So his goal was always to extend his kingdom, to establish his kingdom here on earth. Ever since Adam. Three, the incarnate God was a coming of a king, was re- revealing a coming of a king. Who is the... The the incarnate God that came? Jesus. Jesus, God incarnate. So he's fully God, but he was fully man. And everything he did on here on earth, we have to understand he was trying to reveal to us his very heart and the Father's heart, the Father's nature, but he did it in submission, allowing to his divine nature to leave him the power and the authority that he would obviously have in heaven. To leave him so that he can walk out and show us how we can have a relation with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, as he of the great I am. That you know, I mean, as he we can have relationship with God Himself. Everything he did on earth was in right relationship with God. 
every, every power, every healing, everything he did because he relinquished that. But he was still God and man. Don't, don't, don't allow it, something wave. Are you trying to say he wasn't? No, he was God. But he gave up his divinity to be reincarnated here so that he could go through everything that we've gone through and more. So that we would know how to respond to anything the enemy would try to do to us. Are you guys getting this? So that if we are in right relationship with him, if we are being led by him, if we are being empowered by him, then we have to understand that he even said that we'll do greater things than he did. How can that be? Selah. So as we look at it, that in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God in John 1, 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Well, that's telling me that if he says it in his word, it's real, it's true. We have to figure it out. And fourth is the purpose for the coming of Jesus was to restore kings to their kingdom. It says, and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And have made us kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. Who shall reign on the earth? We shall reign on the earth. The whole goal is to become more like Jesus, who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is not only a king, but he was a high priest. If we're trying, if our goal is to try to be more like Jesus, then it only makes sense that we need to do it his way, not our way. His way was to come at, and, and represent himself as being a king and a priest. Matter of fact, he's not just a priest, he's the high priest. It's all about presence. All about presence. When we see a miracle, his presence is there. You know, right here, when we first, the Lord put it on our, about 15 years ago, or 12 or whatever years, I don't know the exact amount of years, but he, he told us to open up a healing room. And I, as the pastor, had no clue what that was. Really, didn't. So I just studied a lot of healing scriptures. And I started doing that. And then we went to a couple places that had healing rooms. And we started, and God didn't, show us to do it but in the midst of going through the training as we asked how many who would want to come alongside and grab a hold of that and let's let's do this together we had about 36 people babe that decided to do that and in the midst of the trainings for six months 57 people were healed you think God was breathing on it you think God gives you something to do he'll do it matter of fact for the first three to five years or so I don't want to I don't know the exact time I wish I did But the first three to five years, every person who had cancer, God healed them. Every person. Fourth degree, there's a lady right sitting right here. Fourth degree colon cancer, God touched her and healed her. That is awesome. Bell's palsy, God healed. I have seen, personally, seen people get out of wheelchairs, God healed them. I was in India. And the Lord gave me a, a, a word of knowledge that, this, that you've given up on your dream. And then all of a sudden, because I said that, and, they, and, and the mom said, that was walking him in his wheelchair, that's right. That's right. How'd you know? I says, and, and this wheelchair is what's keeping you from your dream. He says, come on, get up. Let's walk. He grabbed my hand, and he stood up, and all of a sudden, there was a cry and a shout in that little church in India like you never heard before. And all of a sudden, I'm, I keep moving after that, and he's running around, and people are screaming, and it's just got wild. Why? Because this good-looking young man was, was, lost his dreams and gave up on his dreams because he was in a wheelchair. I, I'm just saying, God can do, see the, what happened there? The kingdom of God came upon him. God did it. Frank didn't. I just have to be a willing vessel that says yes to say, let's do it together. Let's make it happen. Come on. Miracles, signs, and wonders take place when you allow and when you make room for him. When you prepare your hearts, when you, when you get into a place, when you praise him and don't allow distractions to come in, all of a sudden he inhabits the praises of his people. And then what happens when you take it another level and you start to worship him? And I really, I really believe that it's when 
the authority and the presence of God is present. Miracles, signs, and wonders happen. But beholding him, is, it, it gives me opportunity to refocus my values. We have to look for the opportunity to refocus our values. What's important to us? Is it what's important to him? Without the presence of the Lord, we live randomly. We just go idly by and just take each day as it comes. Been there, done that. I could write the book. But God, but God, the more you hunger for his presence, the more you desire him, the more you will find him. Unbelief is not just the absence of faith, it's partnership with the demonic that wars against God's divine design, God's plan. The revealed will of God is being, is being hindered when we allow unbelief to come into our lives. You're all getting quiet in here. Let me say that again. The kingdom of God is it's, it's so important that we understand that unbelief is not just the absence of faith. It is, but it's not just the absence of faith. It's partnership with the demonic that wars against the revealed will of God. The will is what? His original intent. His purpose. Too often we don't realize we're coming into agreement with what the enemy is doing instead of believing for what God can do. Things look bigger than what we can do. Well, of course, they're bigger than what I can do, but with God. We've seen that with, the, with Joshua and Caleb. They had a different spirit. And then what it said? They're the only two that believe that God was bigger, that they will be bread to us. These giants are nothing compared to my God. Right? See? But they, they, he said they, were, they had a different spirit than the other ten. The kingdom of God is to collaborate with the Lord to have unfulfilled dreams and desires as part of expression of God's government on the earth. Whew, that's a mouthful. That's why he gave us authority, he gave us authority to humanity in Genesis 1. We see that God has original design was to bring his kingdom to earth. It was all about expanding his glory. It was all, all about subduing the earth, taking dominion, be fruitful and multiply. Deep darkness covered the earth. He says, I'm putting you in a place in a garden that's just right for you to be um, successful, for you to establish what I have sent you to do, what I have created you to do. I have taken you from the ground, from the dirt. And I've created you, and now I want you to dominate everything. Holy Spirit. Adam had Holy Spirit. Eve had Holy Spirit. But as soon as they allowed some unemployed cherub to come around and talk them into giving them his, their dominion, then he lost Holy Spirit. Are you guys getting this? And then who had the power and who had walked in governing the world. Satan did. Then all of a sudden you can fast forward and you can go to Noah. Noah, God saved the world through Noah. God saved humanity through Noah and his family. Okay? And then he always wants to reestablish his original design, his will on earth. And so through this fa family lineage, now look what starts to happen. Now Abraham comes. Now you got to understand something. Haran was, uh, th they, were, <coughs> they were not believers in Jesus. They were not believers in God, not our God. It was about leaving my family, leaving everything that I'm familiar with. And he was a wealthy man. And it says that he, he took Lot, his nephew, with him and all of his possessions with him. But he went on this, on this road trip just believing that 
God didn't tell him where to go. He just said, go to the place I will show you. So now he's just going in faith. That's why he's the father of faith. But do you know, I don't know anywhere in the Bible that he ever did a miracle. It might have been a miracle just to believe God that much. You might take it as that. But I don't know where, anywhere in the Bible that says that Abraham actually performed a miracle. Now you think about this. So now you, now you fast forward and, and, you go, and you go to some of these others. How about Moses? Moses, after delivering the people, they're in the wilderness. And this is what God speaks to Moses. And, and, and Moses came not only as a deliverer, but he brings forth the message about kingdom to the people that he delivered from bondage for God's request. we already seen how many miracles that God used him to do. In Egypt, right? And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. It's so important that we grab a hold of it. There there were many who spoke of the kingdom of God in the Old Testament and the New alike. And I've shared some of them with you. But it's over and over. I did a word, I did a search, and there was over a hundred. Over a hundred. I'm saying, Lord, why haven't I preached on this before? There were many who spoke of the kingdom of God in the Old Testament and the New, but the kingdom refers to leadership, and king, a king is a royal position. A king is a royal position. You know, you're royalty. You're the king's kid. You're the king of kings' kids. So there's royalty, right? It's a royal position. And priest is responsible to minister to the ministry of spiritual things. Say spiritual things. So as we look to this, it's through the lineage of Abraham that comes David, who is both king and priest. Whoa, wait a minute. So it was unlawful to be a king and a priest. Well, David was a worshiper before he ever was established an anointed king. David wrote how much of the Psalms? David ministered to God and ministered to the people he led. He was a man after God's own heart. He was the only king in the Bible that I'm aware of that literally removed all of his enemies. All of them. Solomon didn't do it. Even though Solomon took more territory, he still always had enemies next to him. He routed out every enemy. Check it out. He was a man after God's heart, and he didn't quit until peace was upon the land. So we have to see that he routed out every enemy, and that's what God wants us to do. Any enemies that you're dealing with, if you've got a spirit of fear, get rid of it. If you've got a spirit of anger, get rid of it. If you've got a spirit... Uh, you know, it doesn't matter what spirit you got other than Holy Spirit. It's time to rout it out. It's time to be, be allow, the, the, allow the heart of David to come upon you. I got to tell you something. You're all kings. You're all called to be kings and heirs to a priestly ministry. We have to be ministering to God and ministering to others. We have to walk in our authority. We have to walk knowing that, that if God be for us, who could be against us? We have to walk in, in the very... Uh, essence of what his promises say, what his words say, that we have to have a heart to do what he has already designed us to do, and that's to reestablish his kingdom, heaven on earth. Don't be, don't be idle Christians that says, I'm just waiting for the day that when I can go to heaven. No, bring heaven here. Have faith enough to believe that when you pray and you declare someone's healing, it'll happen. And if it didn't happen right then, just keep doing it until it does. See, Jesus said, it's your faith that's made you whole. It's your faith that's healed you. That's why I always pray for a person's faith when I declare over them and pray over them. Because my faith could be enough. Because I've experienced a lot of things with the Lord. I've experienced His kingdom to come on people. A lot. I've seen crooked legs go straight right in front of my eyes before I even knew what that was all about. Seriously. I'm 
and so thankful because God has opened our eyes to see that he has so much more for us than we are actually walking in and living in. It's not about getting angry and getting frustrated and, 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 and speaking out things, even against stuff that you know is wrong. You, can I tell you something? I'm trying to get better at it, if any of you know me. It's hard. When you see some crazy stuff being done to our nation and to people because of, of, of some things that should not be happening, it doesn't make any sense in any kind of way. All I know is I got to pray. I got to pray for those that have lost their way because God cares for them. God loves them. Jesus didn't come for, for, the, for the elect. He didn't come for some. He came for all. He died for all. 